we are talking about persistence. Persistence. We are going over chapter nine of Think and Grow Rich. And um, we are so happy for those of you that are getting to join us live every single week. And when, but when you are not able to, because we know that you guys still are seeing clients and patients, but we are seeing that you are re-watching it and staying in the loop with us. I'm constantly getting emails from people all the time saying, even though I couldn't join you live, it was so nice to see you on the recording. So we do enjoy seeing you guys. We are going over chapter nine persistence, which is the eighth step to riches. So Dory, I'm gonna pass it over to you. I'm gonna interrupt before she starts. Okay. All right. Here's a question for you. Seriously, I started reading this chapter and I thought, dear goodness sakes. Did Dory actually know Napoleon Hill? And I know you couldn't, know, but this chapter <laughs> my is Dory personified. Is. Holy cow, like I start reading this and I read the title of it and I'm laughing, sitting in my little apartment and I'm reading this and I start, it says persistence. So I go, persistence paralyzes resistance. And every, it's hard not to say it, Every right? time I see the word res per persistence now, I say paralyzes resistance. That's right. Dory, you have gotten in I my really brain. That I just kept head. seeing Dory's name in parentheses next to the word persistence <laughs> throughout the chapter. Absolutely. Oh. So sorry to interrupt, but I just, oh, this made good. me laugh through it. it. it no, it, but you know what? It's such an important word. It really is such an important word for everybody to live. It's a sign of power, commitment, drive, not giving up, success. Because when you focus on that with persistence, I mean, the rest is easy. Absolutely. That's really what it is. Back to that burning desire to succeed. Mm -hmm. Well, it kind of goes hand in hand with persistence. And if you're not persistent, then you're just really winging it. And right. as you wing know, it. winging it does not follow success. I have to say, I'm so thankful that I get to work for someone like you and with someone like you who is persistent, mm -hmm. right? So you don't just like, ah, eh, try it once and give up. Mm -hmm. Like we're, if it didn't work the first time, let's figure out why it didn't work, but you're just consistently persistent because mm -hmm. you know the outcome is exactly. gonna be great. Yeah. It's just, you just sometimes have to figure out what are the steps to get there and then just be persistent to keep yeah. doing them. And, and she pushes but, us to all be persistent right. throughout our days here working together as a team. Yes, I'm a pain in the butt. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that. I just said she makes I'll us all be persistent. I usually <laughs> second her pain in the butt, but you know. But you know what? You have to be careful, though, with persistent because it could be either positive or negative because it's very easy to go on the negative side and just keep doing the wrong thing. So you don't want that. So yes, it's good to be persistent, but you have to make sure you're doing it in the right way. Um, actually, I wanna do our giveaway before we actually start. So this week I did a brewing brilliance for our mastermind members. As you notice with Napoleon Hill, every single chapter, he brings in the power of having a great mastermind to help you and guide you. So this past week, I started a brand new series for all of our mastermind members that has to do with marketing. We talked about how important the words are that we use and the language that you use to market your business, to position yourself as the expert, to attract the right people. So what I want to do, I want to give you a taste of the kind of information that you can tap into as a mastermind member. You know, we take it sometimes for granted because we do this all the time. But since you've been so gracious in joining us every single week, I would love to give you that module that I did last week, or actually this week, for our mastermind members. And I'm going to give you free access to it. It was a great webinar. It was a great module. We had some yeah. really important things to be learned about mm -hmm. during that module this week. A lot, a lot of important things. And it's really the foundation of checking up on how good you are doing with your marketing right now. And I would advise you to participate in today, ask the questions, talk to us, and uh, say a shout out of where you are from. We have people joining us from all over the place, which are we're grateful and thankful that you are joining us. So send your comments, send your questions, whether you are on Zoom, Instagram, Facebook, we love to hear from you. So that's what we're going to do. I like it. Yeah, I didn't even awesome. know she was going to do that. So yeah. that, I, I, like I to thought surprise you, you every once in you a while. You do. And I, <laughs> yesterday was on, was it yesterday? No, my days are starting to run together. But today's this, Thursday. Today's Thursday. 
So I, I got to listen into the brewing brilliance as well. And you could just see the lights popping on for some of our members saying, oh my gosh, I haven't thought about that in a while, right? Because you have to consistently keep yeah. thinking about your marketing and making sure that it's at the top notch. Sure. And Dory goes into, you know, looking at yourself on Google and things like that. So whoever is going to get to win that complimentary um, session that she did with our Brewing Brilliance, it's going to be so beneficial for you. So thank Definitely. you for giving that to You're them, Dory. Welcome. So here's what I'd like us to start with. Um, I want to share with you some success stories of how people reach that level of success by practicing persistence. So in the book, uh, Napoleon Hill talks about King Edwards, uh, King, King Andrew, I'm sorry, and uh, his girlfriend, Wallace, and um, how Wallace was so determined. I mean, think about it. Here's a girl that went after a king. <laughs> <laughs> ladies, that's something Dory would ladies, do. <laughs> ladies, if you're single, set your standards way up there. So if a girl by the name of Wallace, I mean, give me a break. <laughs> like, what the fun? <laughs> Can it be a worse name than that? Well, I thought it was male at first. Me too. I'm okay, like, that's <laughs> like half reading. So, uh, yeah, if your name is Wallace, and did you see what it, she looked like? I had to go Google it because, frankly, I never really looked up what she looked like. And she is not Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> and she went after a king, and he gave up his throne <laughs> for this woman. Talking about persistence. I might like need to go she... find a king. <laughs> no, you're married. I know. <laughs> I need to find a king. my story <laughs> But I just think she was so determined and she set her goal up so high that this is what I wanted. And she didn't stop until he left to go to her. And she basically changed the whole royal, uh, what are you, whatever you call mon monarchy. monarchy. Um, you know, and this was back in like 1936. And she married him in 1937 against all odds. Like he was not supposed to marry her, right? That's persistence for you. When you know what you want and you go after it. She was on, she was the first woman to be voted the woman of the year and she was on the cover of Time magazine. Wow. That's pretty powerful. It's pretty persistent, very, I gotta say. Very powerful. <clears throat> so I thought that was an interesting story that he talks about. But the, the thing that you really wanna um, focus on is uh, with persistence, I touched on it a little bit earlier, is it could be, again, for the positive or the negative. So you have to be really careful on what you're being persistent on. And I think that's just so important. And you have to remember that it, it becomes a habit. And when persistence is a habit for the positive, for the innovative, for the adaptation of something great in your life, when you make it a habit, then great things are going to start coming your way. It's very important to remember that. He calls it as the insurance against failure. I just love that. Persistence is an insurance against failure. That's very, very powerful. So keep that in mind as you're going through your daily life and just being faced with different things. So I want to start with some success stories on how people actually became super successful by being persistent. Now, we talked about Steve Jobs before, right? And how he started and how he got fired. Remember, I shared that with you, I think. In from the, his own company. In, yeah. From his own company. Now, if it was anybody else, they were probably like, I can't believe it. I got fired from my own company. What the heck is going on? Blah, blah, blah. He could have been in the pool of negativity. But because he is who he is, he pulled himself up, went and started another company and ended up getting his company back. That's the power of persistence. When you have that kind of drive, that kind of desire, that kind of motivation, then right. you can't help but succeed. So if he can do it, why can't everybody else? And I like how you just said a minute ago that um, the insurance part about the persistence, right? Mm -hmm. And it's an insurance you don't have to pay for, Yeah, mm -hmm. you know? But I mean, really, right. I mean, it, it's right there. You don't even yeah. have to pay for it. All you have to do is be consistently yeah. persistent on it. And 
to me, the most, sometimes the most valuable things can be the ones that are free that are just waiting for you to grab them. Mm -hmm. It's just, are you motivated to go get them? Exactly. You know, and I think that's even in jobs, you know, for me starting an inspiration management, I, I was not going to just, uh, when I got to start here, I started doing social media, right? Just small things, Mm -hmm. little but I wasn't, I wasn't going to stay there. Like after Dory worked so hard to get me to come work here, I wasn't going to be like, okay, I'll just sit over here and do social media. No, Mm -hmm. like I, I figured if I'm coming, I'm going all the way. I had a desire to go all the way. And I've been persistently a continuous pain in her butt to keep moving (laughs) forward. Right. But it it makes you be pushed. Yeah. driven definitely and it's the whole it's, it's the, the whole sustained goal. effort right right so talks mm-hmm. about sustaining that effort persistence is part of that you have to keep doing it you can't just do it one time mm-hmm. right yes yeah. the over and over repetition well, and he talks about this you know how to develop persistence and number one was having a definite purpose and that's what steve jobs and all the people i'm going to share with you as an example had definite purpose Backed by burning desire for its fulfillment. Back to the burning that, desire. Exactly. Mm-hmm. See, the burning desire is really the heart of all these principles that Napoleon Hill talks about. Because if you don't have burning desire, you really have nothing. You have nothing. So you have to have that burning desire. And that's what Steve Jobs had. He wanted to succeed. He was not going to take no for an answer for whatever this board did for him, right? It did to him. So that's not good. Another person that had burning desire, you could like him or not like him, I don't care, but I am making my point, and that was President Obama. Imagine the desire that he had to be the very first black president. That is just, I mean, I just got goosebumps because to have that courage, and again, that desire to become that I just think it's mm-hmm. just phenomenal that anybody can have that vision that's never been done before. And to set those new standards, that's desire, that's persistence. He had all kinds of people tell him probably, who in the hell do you think you are? Yeah. You, think, you think you're going to be president? I think if I remember correctly, like he worked to get himself sure. up and set up the way he was, him yeah. and his wife both. Yeah. So those are the things, those are the kind of people that you really should read up about and see how they actually reach the success that they reach. Another person that I really love, and I am, you know, I love strong women. I love men, but I really love strong women. And uh, J.K. Rowling, Mm -hmm. the writer of Harry Potter, do you guys know her story? Well, she was broke, depressed, uh, like ultimately very depressed. She had two kids she was raising. She had no money. She was divorced, trying to raise those kids. And uh, how many people turned down her transcript? She's trying to work and write her book. And now she's one of the richest women on the planet. So how can someone go? So it doesn't matter where you are right now, you guys. You could be very successful and God bless if you are. That's wonderful. Or you could be halfway, you're like trying very hard, or you could be broke right now. It does not matter where you are right now. You can take that wherever you are and come up with all the things that we've been talking about, the burning desire, the plan, the specialized knowledge, the persistence, all these things that we've been covering for the last few weeks. And you can plan your own success by the choices that you make. So you decide, you decide. So if uh, Ms. Rowling can do that, why couldn't you? If Obama can be the first black president, why couldn't you be the president of whatever association or company you wanna be a president of? If Steve Jobs can get fired from his company and then come back and be bigger than ever before, why couldn't we? Why, why couldn't we? It's just self-limiting beliefs. So you need to get rid of that stinking thinking about what you're believing about yourself and start fresh. Start now. It doesn't matter where you are. Start now to progress into success. Doesn't that make sense? I think that follows like an amen. I felt like I was just in church. Speaking of strong and persistent women, uh, Brianna Kane is watching. Hi, Brianna. How was vacation? (laughs) 
We've been missing you. Yeah. We were just talking about you this morning. That's right. right. <laughs> we need some Brianna her, in our give, life. Give her a shout yeah, I have to tell you, I have been, you know, during the whole coronavirus, we were doing webinars daily with our mastermind members. And I am really missing, missing them. seeing them every yeah. single day. Yeah. I'm like, I feel like, you know, it's like your spouse, you wake up in the morning and you roll over and you're like, oh, you again. But then when I come <laughs> into work and I saw, you know, you get to see the mastermind members and it's like getting close to that time. And I have the biggest smile and I'm like, oh, I'm so excited. Yeah. You know, I wake up in the morning and I see a pillow. And I say, oh, I like it. <laughs> yeah, I actually got a message from Jen from Spa Mariana. And she's like, I miss your face. <laughs> And, well, and she's going to see it at the Leap Ahead Monday. She is. She is. We're starting our Leap Ahead seminar Monday, you guys. We're uh, so, so excited. It's going to be amazing. Yeah. It's been revamped and changed. Oh, and we've updated. been buzzing, buzzing this week around so, this office, getting yeah. this going. It is so amazing, Dory. It's done so much work again Thanks. to make Leap Ahead as incredible as it always is just a little bit different i have goosebumps from it like, I i'm know. so excited getting to kind of see the behind the scenes pieces of it my second Very behind cool, the scenes yeah. leap so excited to share with you guys yeah. next week so let me go on to michael jordan one of my wow. favorite uh, basketball players of all times and not only the fact that we talked about him a little bit last week but i want to give you some statistics about what he was going through. So this is something that he wrote about in one of the books that he wrote, actually. Um, he said, I missed 9,000 shots. 9,000. Wow. Right? I lost 300 games. I missed 26 last shots of the game, which they lost, right? But listen to how he describes it. I failed over and over, and that is why I succeeded. Wow. wow. Pretty powerful. Huh? It is. Very powerful. So again, if a person like Michael Jordan, and I think I told you the coach in his high school team didn't even want him on the team. So if somebody can take that kind of defeat where your coach tells you you're no good, step aside. I have some other team member that need to come in here. I mean, any other kid would have just like drowned it in his misery. Instead, what did he do? He practiced more. Practiced he worked practice. harder. He learned. He just practiced over and over and over and look where he is. Mm -hmm. He was persistent. What, what kind of career oh, he had. One of the best. Yeah. So those are just amazing people that really, when you think about it, and whenever you're down, those are the things that you really should go look at to get you motivated and get you back on track and get you going again. Because there's no reason why, again, you can't reach the success level that you want to succeed. So I have a question for our attendees who are live with us now. Is there someone like some of these people that Jory mentioned that resonate with you that you can throw in and share with us. We'd love to hear who some of those people are that are persistent idols for you. Mm -hmm. I think it would be great to hear from our attendees, whether Facebook, Instagram, or Zoom. And remember, keep get, keep your questions coming so we can answer those. But that would be great to see. For yeah. sure. For sure. Because you know? so I know yeah. there's so many more. Yes, for sure. And um, Stephen King is the next person I'd like to talk to you about. So he had, when he wrote his first book, remember it, Carrie? which turned into a movie. Scared I know, I don't, I don't like scary movies. I don't either. I didn't but know but the scary. story is worth telling here. So when he wrote that script, that book, he got rejected 30 times from 30 different publishers. I mean, that's like enough to depress you. Yeah. And so he took his book and threw it in the trash. It's exactly what happened. So his wife said, what the heck are you doing? She's like, you're not throwing this in the trash. She takes it out of the trash and she says, you're doing this again. You need to submit it again. And sure enough, he submitted it again. And that is acceptance. So sometimes persistence is like it takes you to the edge of giving up. Mm -hmm. And then if you're not persistent, or I should say life takes you to the very edge of failure or you're feeling like a failure. But then if you keep that momentum going and that persistent going, it, you know, magical things happen if to you. If you fall nine times, you got to get up ten. Yeah. 
well, I was listening to, um, I was just telling my team here what I do every morning as a ritual. Do you have a success morning ritual? If you don't, you need you need to take it up. So here's what I do. I'll, I'm going to share with you my morning ritual. <laughs> I know it. Me too. So <laughs> I get up in the morning and I have my cappuccino first. You need to come and fix my cappuccino machine again. I'll be right today. there. Thank you. <laughs> she, she's my fixer upper. We, the, so when we're talking to the guys for the set that's being delivered, they're like, yeah, you need a handy man. I was like, no. pretty sure we just need a handy woman. We got we're this good. covered. He goes, or a woman. <laughs> So anyway, so I get up in the morning, I have my cappuccino, then I sit, you guys know I live on the beach, so I sit on a chair facing the ocean, and I write in my thankful journal, that's how I start every single morning, so I have one page that I actually write every morning of whatever's going on in my mind, uh, everything I'm thankful for, and that's what I do every morning, so once I finish that, I go to my bathroom, uh, I usually pick out my clothes the night before, by the way. You should get into that habit, too, because the last thing you want to do is try to decide what you want to wear in the morning. You should do it at night. So I decide what I want to wear the night before. Everything is ready. So I jump in my shower. Once I get out of the shower, I take my phone in the bathroom with me, and I usually click on my uh, YouTube channel, not mine, on a YouTube channel. I don't watch my own videos. <laughs> <laughs> you should watch my videos, though. <laughs> you should pull up the inspiration. It just gave me an idea. There you, go. you just need to pull up the inspiration management YouTube channel and start listening to all the videos I do for you guys. But that's what I do. I listen to the TED Talks. I listen to Jim Rohn. I, I listen to Think and Grow Rich. I think to I listen to all kinds of marketing experts. I mean, that's all I do. From the minute I step out of the shower to put my makeup on and moisturize or whatever until I'm done, it's usually about half an hour or sometimes a little bit longer. It depends whether I have to I was flat. just going to say it depends on if not. she went to bed with wet hair and then yeah. she's got super curly hair and it's just going to have to straighten it. For those that don't so, know, she has super curly hair. Well, they, they saw it a couple of weeks ago. Oh, yeah, I yeah. forgot about that. Yeah. But anyway, so that's what I do. So every morning I feed my mind with something positive. So that's really what you should do. And it's such a great habit. So you should really develop these successful habits. I call them successful rituals. And then that way you just keep feeding your mind with great things so you can keep improving over and over. So it's just a, a great thing. And remember, as part of her ritual, she says her prayer in the morning oh, yeah. that she shared with you guys. And then she reads her statement. Yes, right? absolutely. So, yeah. I mean, it, it really can you feel like, oh my gosh, can that take a long time? But when you're getting ready and doing all these things, it just soaks into your mm -hmm. your mind, your body, your soul. Well, I just don't understand the people that get up and turn on the TV. I don't get that because it's all negative baloney. And oh. like, I never, never, ever, ever turn the TV on in the morning. Never, you would never. Right. <laughs> See, and that's the same for us, like yeah. in the, my husband and I rarely ever watch television. Mm -hmm. So anything I hear on the news, he's having to tell he's, me. He's your news. He's my like news guy. <laughs> you know. Yeah, she walks in the other day. She's like, "Oh, they shut down the restaurants in Miami." I'm like, "How do you know that?" <laughs> my husband. She's like, me. "My husband just told me." I I don't. And so I don't he's sit the, and watch he's movies the or any of that. So when he turns it off at night and we go into the room to go to bed, we don't turn on a television in our room. I yeah. can't honestly tell you the last time the TV was on. Well, I don't room. have a TV I, I, in my bedroom. I turn on the TV to fall asleep. <laughs> yeah, see, not me. If I if the TV's on, I'm gonna get stuck watching it, and then I'm like, why am I watching something stupid? Like it, it makes no sense, yeah. right? All right, so let's go back to the how to develop persistence. So I shared the first one with you, and that's a definite purpose backed with burning desire, right? So number two is a definite plan expressed in continuous action. So it's not good enough to just have a plan. You have to have an action that goes with it. Because the last thing you want, like let's say you attend the leap ahead, and I'm going to give you the blueprint. I'm going to give you the best business model that's ever been created. And if you don't put it into action, then what all you've done is wasted $1,500 of your money to come and attend. And that's the last thing I would want for you. So it's very important for you. Like this number two, the definite plan backed by action. 
mean, what I love in the book where he says, most ideas are stillborn and need the birth of life injected into them through definite plans of immediate action. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You don't want to procrastinate. Right. That's what we talked about last week. Right. And the last thing you want is to have that block, that procrastination creep into your life right. and keep saying, oh, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it the next day. Um, all these guys I just talked about, they've never said that. No. They don't even know what that word is or that phrase is. So you got to have that, that action, that lack of kill procrastination, right? We, we killed it last week. <laughs> well, I think sometimes it's like I was trying to tell a client today, um, gut instinct. When, when an idea comes to you, that's like a gut instinct telling mm -hmm. you, get up and do something, right? And she was saying something and she's like, you know, I had this gut instinct on this and I'm like, take action. Like you woke up, it was on your mind. There's mm -hmm. a reason why it was on your that's mind. That's because your subconscious mind Correct. was telling you to and do it. And that's what I told her, I'm like, <laughs> do it. Because you'll be more successful if you take action now than if you wait. She goes, well, can we wait six, nine months? And I'm like, no, why, would why? You? I'm like, why would you wait six, nine months? Because you're not going to be a successful. That's procrastinating. And I know. <laughs> you know, and I'm like, you're, and, she, and then when she got done, she's like, okay, so is this how this relationship is going to work? You're, because I, you know, we're coaching yeah. her and she's like, you're just going to tell me to do. And I'm like, yes, that's why I'm here. I'm, I'm to encourage you to go. So she went and started it. And so she was so excited. She sent me an email of the photo of what she was doing. And she's like, look, I started doing it. And I'm so happy I yeah, did. She's yeah. like, I feel weight off of me Good for job. taking that step. Right. They're actually opening a spa in Texas. Mm -hmm. So we've done the business plan. They have their financial loan. They have their space. And today was their welcome call for their branding. So she was so excited. Yes. She could not wait. So it's going to be beautiful. That's well, awesome. I'm sure the team is going to do a great job. Yeah. For them. Very excited. So number three, I love this one, actually, because I already talked about it a little bit about negativity. So he talks about a mind closed tightly, not just closed, closed tightly against all negativity and disencouragement. So sometimes we have relatives or we can have co-workers or we can have people that are going to rain on our parade. You need to really take a look on who you're surrounding yourself with. Do you have people that are encouraging you and making you feel good? Like what Tara was just saying about that example, somebody's motivating you and keeping you positive and encouraged. Or do you have people telling you who do you think you are? That dream is too big. You better calm down. <laughs> Don't let, so be careful. You know, that makes a big impact on your life. It really does. So be very, very careful of that. And then number four is having, a, back to that mastermind, having a friendly alliance with one or more people. So when we have sometimes ideas, you can think about it. You can say, oh, this is a good idea. But there's nothing like if they're the right people, not the bad people, the right people. And you say, you know what? I have this idea. What do you think about it? Can we explore it? And if you have somebody that can give you positive feedback and sincere feedback, then you know how you can expand upon that idea and make it part of what you're trying to accomplish. I think that's so valuable, especially in a mastermind group, right? Like Dory started off and saying, like every chapter of this book talks about a mastermind group. Sure. And, you know, and we keep talking about our members, but the thing is, that's what we're doing all day long. Oh, yeah. As business advisors, yep. I'm talking to members and potential members all day long. And when they come up with an idea and they're like, okay, let's talk about this. And I listen to it and I say, you know what? That's a really great step. Let's just tweak it here, here, and here. And imagine how much more you could get from it mm -hmm. if you just adjusted just a little bit. Mm -hmm. And it's nice to see them so open about it, right? Absolutely. I, I probably, well, but that's, that, that's why they are mastermind correct. members because they see the value Absolutely. in what it is. I remember the first time I joined a uh, mastermind group, um, it was when I first went into business for myself after I left my corporate job uh, almost 20 years ago now, 19 years ago. So uh, I had I have never owned a business before. Um, I told you I'm the youngest of five kids. Everybody in my family was an entrepreneur except me. So 
I, I was scared, nervous. I didn't know, though I had my father, family members that were all encouraging me to do it. Uh, they didn't have time. They had their own business to run. They didn't have time to come and babysit me and tell me, do this, do that. I mean, they just didn't. So I made the investment. I realized that I needed help and I wanted to get to success the fastest way possible. And that's why I use this phrase with you all the time. You want to reach success the fastest way possible. And I joined and it was like $18,000 at the time for a one year mastermind group. And that was a lot of money because remember I told you I lost almost $300,000 in a bad investment that I was going to invest in my new business. So I was basically, I mean, I had a husband to support. I had a son to take care of. We had a certain lifestyle that we were used to. And here I am. I went to like making nothing. (laughs) And you want me to give you what? $18,000 to join a club, a mastermind group. But I did it. And you know what? When I made that commitment to join, it was like night and day in my life because I had this group of people that I could go to because they were all entrepreneurs. They were all millionaires. I was probably the least successful one in the bunch. Yes, I ran a successful resort, but still I really didn't know how to run my own business. So I made that commitment. And you know what? Ever since then, every year, I mean, she knows... uh, she pays them. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Uh, um, every year, I mean, I have to belong to yeah. some kind of group. And that's what keeps me going. So is it an investment? Absolutely. But it's an investment I'm happy making. And that's why I'm so proud with so many members that we have because they're making that investment so they can improve their business. Mm-hmm. So if you've never been part of a group, you really, I want to encourage you to at least look at it and see what it means to really be part of a mastermind Well, this week was so excited. Tara and I got to do three different welcome calls for three Mm -hmm. brand new members to our mastermind groups. And they were just so amazed. And I just loved you. I love doing them with Tara because she still knows so much more than I do about this company because I've only been here for, you know, six and a half months now. And so I love to sit in and and be part of those those initial calls because... We just can give them so much information and just give them so much hope Mm -hmm. for when they had none or they were just so afraid to Mm -hmm. jump in and dive into these med spots. And I think the nice thing about it is, Megan, um, and thanks for the credit. I mean, I love doing the calls with them, but you can see like when we're on the call with them, we're not just, oh, this is where you click. This is where you do. We actually say, okay, what's the challenge? We do a business assessment, right? So we can figure out what's the challenges, where they're at now. And then start setting that definite plan. So we say, okay, we're doing this. We're going to do this. And they see that there's a plan. There's not just a portal that they wing it, if yeah. you will. Like mm-hmm. our mastermind membership is set up for that structure exactly. And two of their comments this week was, I have realized I can't just work in my business. Correct. But I have to work on my business. Mm-hmm. And that's as we call it around here, a Doryism. That they didn't know was a Doryism. <laughs> but it totally fits for them to be part of this mastermind group because it's that like Minded right. individuals. Dora five. Yeah. Dora five. Oh, I think they <laughs> all the time, Dory. <laughs> I have to tell you, I think they were watching Dory's YouTube videos Probably. and in their subconscious yep. mind they kept hearing that yeah, yeah. I have to work on my business, not, not in, my, in business. my business. And yep. then they didn't realize where did I get that from? Yeah. yeah. That really came from Dory. I'm sure. But I well, mean, actually, I learned that. Give credit where credit yes. is due. I, I learned that from the book that I read a long time ago. It's actually a great book. You should read it after you read my book. It's called The E-Myth, E and yeah, then Myth, like M-Y-T-H. It's by Michael Gerber. Yeah. And uh, it's a great book for business people to read. And he's the one that actually came up with that phrase. Are you working in your business or are you working on your business? Uh, it makes so much sense because most people, when they first come to us, they're working in their business. They're doing the treatments. Mm-hmm. You're, you're doing the injectables. You're seeing patients. You're doing facials. And that's all fine and dandy. But who's running the business? Uh, you just got off the phone with one of the doctors that I we did. work with. And um, she she's that kind of person. She's working in, in her business. business. And that, I mean, yes, you're a doctor. But if you really want to, you, what you really want to do is make a decision. Do you want to be working in your business, which is fine and dandy. But then you need to have somebody who is running the business. 
like what you did. Absolutely. And, and if you don't have difference. a million like running your business, then you're not going to reach the highest levels of success. So those are decisions that you have to make. And, you know, even me, I'm stuck working in my business because I'm the speaker. I do the seminars, but I try not to run our daily operation. I try not to do the nitty gritty that I don't need to be doing. Right. That's what I have. Tara. Other people for <laughs> Sarah, but, and and the more you would, you don't want to be in the weeds, right? You're in the weeds if you're working in your business. You're not seeing that big picture. You're not guiding the team to take you to the next level, and that's where, as a leader, you need to spend some time directing and being able to see the next step, the next phase of your success that you need to go to. And that's really what I focus on. A lot of times on the weekend, they tease me all the time because I work. But really, the weekends, what I love about them is their visionary time for me. It's me reading. It's me learning new things. It's me listening to more stuff. And then coming up with that, okay, where am I going to take the company right. next? Mm -hmm. And that's what you should be doing. And it really makes a, it makes a big difference. I have to success. tell you, Mondays around here, you never know what Dory thought of on the weekend. I mean, she comes in on Monday and she's like, okay, I have an idea. And we're like, oh, no. Oh, we're, like, oh, no. we're on our jet plane and Dory's about to take us somewhere. Here so we're getting ready to fly high. Here she goes. And you never know. And you know when Dory's working on the weekend because I'll check my email and I'll be like, uh-oh, she's coming up with ideas. And she'll send a message, be like, remind me of this. Remind me of that. And I'm like... Or I'll look at her calendar <laughs> and I'll see like her little notes in her calendar. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh. Well, I have to tell you one thing about her. She's so persistent yes. on using her calendar to time block even her weekends. She time blocks every single thing. But you, I have to tell you. Even it, sex, no. No. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> it is never a dull moment around here, I tell you. <laughs> If you are a prince, I, I need you want to put to it door. on my calendar. <laughs> I'm looking for that prince for uh, I, I may have a date this weekend. <laughs> we'll, we'll put it on the calendar and see if it happens. I told him I'll get back with him. But I have to tell you, like she said, is if, if Dory was down here in the weeds, our company wouldn't be able to do things like the virtual leap ahead and step forward mm -hmm. for members in our community, if you will, in the med spa, day spa, wellness aesthetic community because no one is really no, no one, one is, is doing, doing this no. and whether they're a member or not a member they need that person and so if dory was down here in the weeds with us coming in doing that clock in eight to five whatever and leaving it would be hurting them mm -hmm. you know and yeah. so because she's up here and she's driving us forward, she's coming up with those things. And yes, she still speaks and she, you know, travels a lot, which, Not you know, well, with the coronavirus, she hasn't been able to travel anywhere. And I tell you, when she does have her first trip, we're not even going to know how to pack. We're so out of the, the, <laughs> the rhythm. I know. <laughs> so, I mean, used to, we could pack really oh, yeah. fast, but I love working in a company like that where you know that your your owner, your CEO, your founder is driving, moving forward. They're well, not okay the, with saying this is that enough. She gave us last week about, you know, developing your coaching skills. Absolutely. It, it was just, that was my weekend read. I hung out with my book in the beach mm -hmm. when it wasn't thunderstorming and just kind of dove in with my highlighter and my red pen. And mm -hmm. it just really yeah, it's it's just fun to learn develop your I know, in your I'm constantly mind. marking in my book and my husband's like, didn't you learn in school? You're not supposed to write in your books. I'm like, oh, these, are, these are book. my that, books that, that's that not I what Dory write. said. <laughs> I'm like, these are my books to write, you know? Brilliant sense said hi ladies smile hi, face. so the mastermind group that he talked about in the book uh, about how your mastermind group should help you one thing number one was definiteness of purpose <clears throat> number two is clarifying your desire number three was self-reliance number four was definiteness of plans that are organized five was accurate knowledge you don't want just any knowledge you want smart and accurate knowledge no guessing right and then cooperate cooperation and sympathy and then willpower those are all things that your mastermind group should be able to help you and develop habits that are of course uh, 
resistance. <clears throat> resistance is the direct result of a habit, so developing these positive habits that I talked about earlier. And then he gave you a whole list of uh, symptoms for lack of persistence. So my advice for you for your homework is to go through that chapter again, look up all the symptoms that are giving you lack of persistence, and then see if any of those are part of your habits. So he talks about procrastination, lack of interest, indecision, indecision. That's probably like, I wanna sometimes just slap people around and just like, what's wrong with you? Just make a decision already. I tell this to my uh, guest relations team all the time. Like, what's wrong with them? They don't want to attend the leap ahead. Are you kidding me? Right. <laughs> they're, they're out of their mind. Slap them. No, just kidding. <laughs> Give them a virtual slap. So indecision is horrible. Make a decision already. Self-centered. Indifference. Indifference is awful. Like, mm, like not good. So you don't want to do that. Uh, <clears throat> the habit of blaming others. Terrible. Weakness of desire, quitting or giving up, lack of organized plans, wishing instead of willing, and the habit of blaming. Oh, I already said that one. I put that on one there twice, <laughs> so it must That's be very important, important it right? <laughs> uh, just a couple more. Uh, we, then we need to award mm -hmm. our winner. Weakness of desire, yes. Uh, quitting at the first sight of defeat. How many people do you see do that? <laughs> oh, my God. Not the ones I mentioned. No. But but usually, yes, people give up, and then that's it. I tried that. I get this in training, actually, all the time. I go on site sometimes to do training, or I'll be on a webinar, and someone will say, well, we tried that. It didn't work. Try it again. Try it again. Tweak it. Try it again. Tweak it. Try it again. Don't give up. This is not working. I said, well, then tweak it. Right. You yeah. don't do surgery. Why would you do a surgery consultation for? You wouldn't. <laughs> Let's tweak this. I kid you not. This was a conversation I had today. Right. Yeah. And the thing is, if it works for somebody, it works. Correct. The thing is, you just have to adjust it, right? Mm -hmm. Because everybody's situation is different. But the nice thing about our, our systems that Dory's put in place with for our members, whether you're the clarity hiring system that we talked about My with favorite. the member, um, the guest relations system, all of them, even the consultation, they all can be tweaked to fit what needs for you. But as long as you follow them, they work. And that's the thing for about sure. it is you can honestly stand behind it and you say, mm -hmm. I know it works. Well, we know it works because we have. I know. That's results. what I'm saying. It, it, <laughs> and when people say, yeah. well, it didn't work. I'm like, okay. Let's keep trying. Like, but we don't get people that say that. But No, I'm saying some. before. Most of them, like, we had a call with someone. They're like, oh, yeah, we used to do consultations. It didn't work for us. I'm like, well, you didn't use our method That's of right. consultation. Exactly. That's why it didn't work for you. Exactly. Uh, lack of organized uh, plans in writing. Uh, wishing instead of willing. And then fear of criticism. So those are all things that could be crippling your persistence. So you definitely don't want those in your life. So there's 16 of them. And my, or actually 15, since I repeated one twice. <laughs> so go through them and have a really a truth with yourself. Assess your mindset and see if some of these things are keeping you from moving forward and achieving the level of success that you're worthy of achieving. So that's your homework to do. All right, so I'm sure we have some questions. Let's take a couple of questions and then let's give away our module. Well, I have to just say before I go to the questions, um, Tanya Miller, she said, thank you ladies so much for your time. Love looking forward to this every week and I'm looking forward to the virtual leap ahead. Oh, uh, okay. so we're meet you so virtually. excited Yay. that we get to see yeah, her plus you. many more. Thank you so much. Hi, Tanya. So, Tanya, Sarah's saying hi on the other side of the camera, um, but we're so thankful for clients like this that are supporting us and doing this every week. So, I'm going to turn it over to Megan for some questions yep. that clients were sending in throughout, throughout the week. Throughout this week, right? Mm -hmm. So, they were talking about, oh my God, I got to the right question page. So what's the difference between self-discipline and persistence? Mm, 
That's a good question. Who asked Sue that? Sue was asking that wow. question. That's a very good question. What is the difference between persistence and self-discipline? Well, I think it first starts with self-discipline. So if you have your burning desire, you have your plan, and you're committed to actually achieving it, first you have to have self-discipline to fulfill the action. And then once you fulfill the action, you have to be persistent to continue doing what it is that you want to do. That is a great question. Yeah. Wow. And, and I think I Sue, is, from Sue is super persistent. Wow. She's really that is a diving good question. into the persistence. Whoa. And wow. then I was talking to Dr. Lisa. That was a good answer, right? That was a great answer. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Right? Wow. Sometimes I even impress myself. Yeah. <laughs> Who would have thought? Who would have thought? Who would have thought? Yep. And then I was talking to <laughs> You gotta get one of those hands, but don't yeah, just pat her on the back. back. Exactly. On the There's back. not much touch there each you other. Go. Just pat her on the back. We're not much touch each other, so it's a virtual pat. Well, sometimes it's lonely. Not many yeah. people give us compliments. No. <laughs> you know, the nice thing about our offices is the three of us don't even have to get up from our desk to have conversations, even though, you know, we're in three separate office. We can just Literally, talk and they can share talk between what's me. My office is in the middle. <laughs> Tara will call her from her office to Dory. Dory will call her back. I'm like, I'm here too. We, we don't, we don't <laughs> holler. We don't. We just casually we talk. Must be we, you know what? It's always, I have to say, it's always words of encouragement. Like, you know, after getting off of a call with a coaching client, you know, Dory's always walking through and saying, nice job on coaching them. That was amazing. Yesterday so it was, girl, it, it, that's how it's done. Yep. And so it's, it's things like that, that keep you going and motivated. So it's not like she's hollering at us. And I mean, hollering a nice, like friendly, bubbly, right, right across the, like, <laughs> they, 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 they get it. Jory, I have a question that just came in and someone is asking, because we've been talking about the leap ahead and they heard Tanya say how excited she is that she's coming to the virtual leap on Monday. They're asking, is it too late for them to join? Oh, I can answer that one because I answered it a little bit earlier for Dr. Leaf says she has a new person that she wanted to include. Absolutely not. Yeah, there you go. It's I think absolutely not, not too yeah. late to join. And the reason for that is, you know, it's all recorded. We've mm -hmm. never, ever done that before. <laughs> So before you came for three days, as fast as your hand could write notes, that's what you left with, right? And you had your tools that you left with, but there's so much education coming that you you literally could sit with Dory for 365 days and still, you know, be taking notes because it's so much information. Yeah. So the fact that she's recording this and offering it to everybody, not just for a week, not for a day, you're getting it for a year. Mm -hmm. That's a year of education. I probably shouldn't have done that. <laughs> right now. She's not taking it back. I probably I mean, should have done it for three months. Yeah. That was very generous. Was it was. Generous I mean, that's a year, a years of education yeah. that people are paying. Because it does take a year, like with our mm -hmm. new flying high program. It really does take the first year to implement a few of the things that we talk about in the leap ahead. Right. And then you graduate to the next year and the next year. Well, and that's and one of the things I talked to a member about today is they had a little bit of turnover. They had somebody that left due to some health concerns. And so they're looking to replace an office manager. And I said, you know, this is great because for the first time ever, Dory's recording these and giving you access. And I know this doc has been to two leaps ahead of this. Mm -hmm. Right. But now she'll have the tools to present during training mm -hmm. when we mm -hmm. find that perfect and manager especially the for her. price. I mean, we were charging three thousand oh. dollars a yeah. person. Yeah. And now they're paying fifteen hundred, and they can have their entire leadership attend. So I probably should have charged more for that. Too. Trust me, when Dory, <laughs> when Dory rolled out that price, she about gave me a heart attack. But I wanted to pass on the savings to them because Absolutely. we don't have food. We don't right. have to pay for the hotel. We don't have to pay for the entertainment at night when I took everybody out to the yacht club. Mm -hmm. I mean, we. I just, I wanted to pass on the savings to you. So that's mm -hmm. why we did it. And I like because we talked so many, but right? Because we're in business unusual, as we all know, mm -hmm. right? And the nice thing about the leap ahead is it's never, Dory has always, always adjusted it based off of, you always have to be in a, innovative and reinventing to make sure the systems still are mm -hmm. persistent with the day that is happening now. And mm -hmm. she has done that with the leap ahead. So it does help people because we all, as we all know, this is not going away tomorrow. Mm -hmm. it, 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 we 
we could still be in this in 2021. So you have to know how to handle this mm-hmm. current situation sure. right I now. Have insurance. Absolutely. Yeah. And one yeah. of the f- nice things that I loved about it is she came up with the coffee system. Yeah. And oh, that coffee favorite. system is going to help everybody for if this happens and continues to happen, mm-hmm. you're going to be okay. Yeah. I mean, and that's giving me goosebumps yeah. knowing that everybody is going to be okay yep. as long as they follow it. Yeah. It makes a difference. That makes it I valuable. can't read that far, but I just see some things yeah. popping up on your screen over there too, Tara. So Monchek, who is a member and we Oh, we love Machek. It, it's never, never, never a dull, a dull moment. moment nope. with him. He said, I will miss the entertainment with Dory at night from the leap ahead. Uh, I wouldn't be yacht surprised club if he dinner. just showed up here. <laughs> <laughs> you know? We should have a virtual party. We should have well, a virtual party. Well, he said, party. he's yeah. like, what about the yacht club dinner? <laughs> yep. so, you know? So, and that's the Just thing so is, you guys know, I would take everybody. I belong to the yacht club in Daytona. And I would take everybody that came to the leap ahead, especially the members. We would do a members dinner mm-hmm. the first night and then we would take other people the following day but we yeah. had so much fun that was always I mean, so much it fun. was always fun we, we I, work I, hard I, I will miss that yes. too magic so we I work we hard do that we, after one of them with us we should we should, we do, should you know what we should do probably a party on the module how many modules are we having 12? 12 12 so maybe we should do like a little celebration everybody should have a glass of wine a champagne, champagne toast together we, we do could do that yeah virtual we so could thank do you a, for that idea <laughs> we could do a virtual happy hour if you will mm. Celebration. So, a celebration. celebration hour. That's what we should yeah. call it because yeah. it is. It's a celebration that you've graduated mm-hmm. and now you're taking that definite step mm-hmm. to making actions. Well, and the nice thing about this is, is they don't have to wait till the 12th module to now go do that action, right? Mm-hmm. They're doing it every single day as the Well, we're modules doing are. so many fun things too. Mm-hmm. Um, so every module, you're going to have your presentation, your homework, your tools, and what, what I'm going to like about this, though I love doing it in person, but what I'm going to love about this is the fact that you have time to actually do the homework and actually implement as we go along. I think Absolutely. it's going to be very nice. Yeah. So any other questions? Well, Tanya was Wait, just saying almost... she thanks you so much for the generosity oh, because my pleasure. it makes a difference. My pleasure. Yeah. And I have to tell you when she's talking about doing fun things and stuff, so those that are registered and those that are going to register, you're going to get a special app that you have to download yeah, to where we fun. can like do questionnaires and trivia, trivia, trivia questions, trivia, quizzes. Some quizzes. Yeah, quizzes. and yep. give you the opportunity to keeps, win something. Yes. Prizes, yep. But it keeps your mind sharp, right? Yeah. So you have to focus so you can yeah. stay up to date on those. And know, know the takeaways. I think that's going to be the mm-hmm. most important thing. I want you to come to this or anything that you attempt to learn is the takeaways. Every time you learn something or you read something or you watch something, you need to sit back and say, okay, what were my takeaways? Mm -hmm. And if you don't ask yourself that question, then you just waste your time. Like I gave you my morning success ritual every morning. That's how I end my morning is what were my takeaways? And believe it or not, you probably, you guys probably think I'm crazy, but Mm -hmm. I am sometimes. So next to my phone is a pen and a piece of paper. So as I'm listening and putting makeup, if I hear something yeah. like so genius, I jot it down. So that is my takeaway for the day. So keep right. that in mind as you're going through anything that you learn. So let's take one more question and then give away our yeah, absolutely. Um, prize. Do we have one more question? One? I do. So Maria is here. How long do you stay persistent if you don't think something is not working? That's a great question. Oh, we have some smart people on with us yeah. today. I think they stepped up their game because yeah, they know they what people are talking about here. So how long would you stick with persistence before you give up? Hmm. I think it or be, not before you give up, before you think it's not working. Oh, so how long do you keep doing before it? Before you, you realize you know, it's not working. Right. Well, I wouldn't keep doing something if it's not working. You need to go back to your plan. You need to tweak it, adjust it, and then try it again. So if you see something is not working, back to that insanity is repeating the same thing over and over and expecting different results. So if you know for sure it's not working and you're measuring, because most people don't measure and don't really track exactly their true performance. So if you know for sure, and you might want to bounce that idea off somebody else, by the way, don't be the only person to think that it's not working. So then revise your plan and then take action again. 
the whole idea here is not to give up totally. Well, and I think they actually have to look at numbers, right? I've had so many people um, talk about their website and they're like, we had someone crazy enough called and said, oh, I want to delete the options of my site. And I'm like, are you crazy? And she's like, well, it's not working. I'm like, well, how do you know? She goes, well, I don't know. And I said, have you logged into your opt-in system to see how many opt-ins you have? And she was like, oh, I never thought about it. And I'm like, are you kidding me? So we actually logged in and she had so many opt-ins. And I'm like, here, you're telling me it's not working. And I'm like, what isn't working is the fact that you haven't signed up to do the coaching to implement those opt-ins. I'm like, the website is working for you and it's doing its job. The follow through of those opt-ins is what isn't working. So we don't need to delete them off the site. We need to now coach to start working the (laughs) opt-ins that are coming in, right? We did have a mastermind member that we had to take the opt-ins off for a little while because they had had too many many Uh, and they couldn't accommodate anymore. Poor Denise. Yeah. yeah, that was Denise. Yeah, yeah it was. Yeah. That's yeah. why I said yeah. 14 Denise, I knew it was like her. over 2,500 people in like two months or something. Uh, it's crazy. Yeah. So I have to tell you, Monchek, I mean, we love him so much, but he said 10 years work with Dory has cost him, is worth more than $1,500 to attend the leap ahead. He said he could never put a value on the money and education he's received with Dory. Yeah. So we love Macha. Macha's great. You know, sometimes I feel like he's part of the team. We might have to figure out how to bring you know, him in. <laughs> and that's what's so nice about, you know, we have people that have been with us for literally years, like some that are 10 years or more. And it, it is just, I admire people like that because, again, I'm I'm a big advocate for education and self-improvement and all that. Right. And when I see others like that, hey, my hat is off to you. I wish more people were like that. If more people like that, our world would be a much better place. Right. Hey, before we lose our followers on Instagram, yeah, we have two we've minutes. got two minutes and we need <laughs> to give, give away something away. Yeah. You know, I really like that question Maria sent in is um, how long to be persistent. So I really think You know that- what? Why don't I do this? I want to do something very special. I feel very generous today. Let's You're just, generous every day. Uh, I'm going to be more even. So you know what I'm going to do? Anybody that joined us for today's, I'm going to give that module to everybody. Wow. That's what I'm going to do. All right. So just I don't think it's fair to just yeah. give it to one no, person. No, you know, I agree with Let's you. Let's just yep. give it to everybody. So if we don't have your email address in our database, please email Tara, T-A-R-A, at inspirationmanagement.com. Say that you were at the book gathering. For and chapter we will, nine for chapter nine persistence and we will send you the brewing brilliance from the mastermind group totally free so you get a taste what it's like to be part of the mastermind group wow Woo-hoo! i feel like my emails are about to get bombarded I'm glad I have I'm a lot so of letters excited. in my name so she doesn't ever <laughs> use my email. <laughs> yeah, no, we can spell your name. It's just too complicated. Exactly. <laughs> How many times can you spell Megan? Yeah, I, yeah, you gotta get cut it down to four letters. Yeah. Dory and Tara, yeah. that's Man. as far as we go. Four letters. Four letters. And if you're, and that's how, uh, pretty much how Dory dates. Uh, One syllable, guys. That's, that's right. right. Tim, Tim, Jim, Tim, Tom, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> they're all saying Woo-hoo, thank you Dory so all they're right. all so excited awesome. that they get to all work. right you it. guys well God bless stay safe yes and until next time stay, stay inspired, inspired. bye, bye. bye.